Hey guys, and welcome to Book a Ween Day Two. I hope you guys are enjoying the series so far. I know we're pretty like a little bit into it, not like too far, but I hope you guys are enjoying the book so far, and I hope you guys are looking forward to what's to come. Today's book is Haunted Nights. Now this is an anthology of 16 short stories written by different people in a little collection and I am very excited to talk about this book. I did not think I was going to love this book as much as I did. Anthologies are very hit or miss for me. Either I love the stories or I hate the stories and I think it's really unfortunate when I hate them because <laughs> It's just, it's hard, it's hard to hate something that someone spent so much time on, books, short stories, anything. It's just, it's not a great feeling to not like someone's art. So um, I was a little bit worried because anthologies can be quite hit or miss for me, but luckily I did really enjoy this. So let's talk about the cover. So this is a really pretty monochromatic cover. It's very gray, dark, uh, black. I like that. I don't know. It's, it's eye-catching in a very mellow way. It's not too in your face. It's not too bright. It's not too overwhelming, but it's, it's pretty, if that makes any sense. I also really like the font for Haunted Nights. I think that's a really like cool, like creepy marker kind of font, if that makes any sense. I don't know. I just really like the cover. I think it's really pretty. So uh, let me read you the back. Halloween is the night that monsters come out to play. Long before its traditions became defined by mass produced masks, blood soaked horror films and carved pumpkins, the murky origins of All Hallows Eve lay rooted in dark festivals and black magic, in old fables of diabolical tricksters and murderous pranks, and in tales of cursed souls lost in purgatory, of vengeance and changelings. From sly modern narratives to haunting traditional stories, from the brutal to the experimental, these 16 stories brilliantly and terrifyingly explore the many facets, cultures, and traditions of our most provocative holiday. Honestly, this is one of the first times that I agree with something completely in the back of the book. This has everything. I mean, it, it really does. It has traditional stories. It has more modern, like... I don't know they all feel very very different but we'll get into that we'll get into that let me give you a synopsis um just an fyi i am going to give a synopsis of each story remember there are 16 <laughs> so i am going to try really hard to keep it short sweet and to the point for you guys i don't want this video to be too 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 long of me just rambling so i am going to try to just give like a one line maybe two lines of a little synopsis per each story just to give you guys a little feel and then i'll give you guys my thoughts but you can already tell i really like this book story one is called with graveyard weeds and wolf bane seeds and this is about a group of teens who go to the holston house which is a haunted abandoned house and they just go to cause some trouble some mischief on halloween Story two is called Dirt Mouth, and this is about a man who just lost his wife. So he decides to take a little trip into the mountains with his two twin babies. This is the same mountain that he just currently lost his wife to. And on Halloween, someone makes a special appearance. Story three is called A Small Taste of the Old Country, and this takes place in Argentina after World War II. Two men are approached by an older man with bread and he tells them that it's bread from his home country Austria and the men love the bread they're taken by it it's delicious so he invites them to spend the Austrian version of Halloween with him story four is called Wick's End this is about an older man and a woman who meet in a bar and they decide to have a bet to see who can tell the scariest story however they're both holding quite a secret. Story five is called The 17 Year Itch and this is about a man who has an itch that no matter how hard he scratches, he can't get rid of. 
Story six is a flicker of light on Devil's Night and this is one of my favorites in the book. And this is about a single mom who is struggling to control her two kids. Story seven is called Witch Hazel and this is about two twin sisters who catch a disease and then go insane. Story eight, I can't actually pronounce the title. I'm not quite sure how you say it. And instead of sounding like a moron, I'm going to put the title here. <laughs> And this is about a boy who seeks revenge on a girl who bullies him. Story nine is called We're Never Inviting Amber Again. And this is about a man named Drew who really hates his sister-in-law. And I mean like really hates her. Story 10 is called Sisters. And this is about two sisters who are very intrigued about Halloween and what it entails. Story 11 is called All Through the Night. And this is about a girl who is pregnant and she makes a deal with a man. However, the man is not quite what he seems. Story 12 is called A Kingdom of Sugar Skulls and Marigolds. And this again is one of my absolute favorites. And this is about a guy who carves a name into a sugar skull. That way that person can visit him on Dia de los Muertos when the barrier is open for the dead to visit the living. Uh, how Ever, he ends up carving the wrong name. Story 13 is called The Turn. Again, one of my favorites. And this teaches you the lesson that if you hear footsteps behind you on that night, you don't turn around. Story 14 is called Pat Cadigan, and this is about a man named Jack who tries to make a deal with a recently deceased woman. However, the deal is a very dirty deal. Story 15 is called Lost in the Dark, and this is about a professor who interviews a former student of his about a horror film she made. Story 16 is called The First Lunar Halloween. This again is one of my favorites. This takes place in the year 2024 when the remaining humans live on the moon. They decide to hold an old tradition called Halloween and it does not go quite as they thought it would. Okay, those are at least 16 stories. Now, let me tell you my thoughts. This has to be one of the best, if not the best anthology I have ever read. All the stories are so creepy and captivating. I honestly could not put this book down. I was very, very into it. This, I actually read this book when I was very sick and I was not feeling reading. I'm going to tell you that right now. was not feeling it. And I honestly loved reading even though I was like deathly sick. Okay, that's like an exaggeration. I wasn't deathly sick, but I felt like I was deathly sick. So that says a lot. It honestly reminds me of reading ghost stories when I was younger. I would go to a bookstore and pick up those really thick, big volumes of ghost stories where it had tons of ghost stories in it. And me and my mom would buy them and then we'd take them home and we'd try to like scare ourselves and like, you know, freak each other out and like read them out loud. It kind of reminds me of that because it gives me that nostalgic ghost story feeling to it, but they're very well-written and modern and even the older ones feel fresh and new not something i see constantly and everywhere under the sun it's just they're all so different fresh and so intriguing to read i mean they all have a spooky feeling to them a very creepy feeling you get that pit in your stomach when you're reading them like you don't know what quite's gonna happen and you're kind of freaked out about it because you don't know if it's gonna be good or if it's gonna be bad or if you should freak out or if it's gonna be fine in the end it's just you're very unsure and i i love that feeling i love that feeling guys i'm gonna give it five pumpkins out of five i highly 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 recommend this book to anyone looking for something creepy, scary, spooky, freaky this Halloween time. I mean, honestly, all year round, it's perfect. I mean, I read horror all year round, so I think most of you guys probably do too. But there's something about it that was so perfect for Halloween. I mean, I know all the stories took place on Halloween, obviously. But I don't know, it just felt so right for Halloween. I don't know. I don't know quite how to explain it. 
I just really, really, really enjoyed this. I think if you want to read it all year round, you want to read it for Halloween, whatever, I think it's such a good book. So, so, so good. Okay, guys, that's it for Haunted Nights and Bookoween Day 2. I... <sighs> I love this book. I'm so happy that I got to read this. I'm so happy I picked it up. I love this. I'm so happy that I included it in this series. I think it deserves to have a place in this series. It's just, mm, it's good. It's a good book. Anyways, that'll do it for Bookween Day 2. I hope you guys are enjoying this series. If you are, please give it a thumbs up. Maybe subscribe to my channel. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.